So this first slide connects to the uh, adiabatic connection talk just given by Professor Mel Levy. So constant electron connect to physical electrons. And um, this adiabatic connection is the really the theoretical framework to connect DFT to many body theory. And then this basically um, coupling parameter lambda here put in front of the electron-electron uh, repulsion operator and you keep the electron density constant along the process. So with this, it is possible to, to define the exchange correlation energy exactly in terms of the adiabatic um, connection. Now this J is the U of Professor Maori and the U from my previous talk too. Uh, J is the Coulomb energy. And the interesting um, thing is that when you uh, look at it, how can you evaluate this exchange correlation energy, uh, you are working with first quantization, just using 1 over R i j, then there is really uh, only one way to do it. But if you work with uh, the second quantization notation for the electron-electron interaction, then you, you have um, two channels to explore this adiabatic connection. The first one is the particle hole channel, and that's the normal channel that most people work with. It's uh, arranged so that it's a annihilation and creation operator. And this the T is related to a second order density matrix. And electron correlation energy can be expressed from this formula using this T in this very compact location. The other channel is the particle-particle or whole hole channel in which you just switch the uh, order of the creation and annihilation operator to annihilation and to creation or to creation and to annihilation. Then that allows you to express the electron correlation in a different way, the buoy matrix. So the uh, connection um, for the particle pa particle hole channel, how do you evaluate this second order density matrix in, in, in many body theory? Um, one really very, very powerful way is to look at it from linear response theory. And uh, if you have, um, this is the expression for density matrix or density, the diagonal is density uh, in a normal systems, and you perturb it with a laser, for example, Hong Kong dependent uh, electromagnetic field. So it will be a potential depending on time and do a perturbation. Then you will observe subsequently there is some electron density change. And this change uh, to the linear order is given by the propagation operator, uh, the propagation propagator pi. And this pi contains really very interesting information. So this is the linear response calculating the, the linear differences in electron density because of the time-dependent perturbation. This pi, this pi, if you uh, express in terms of many-body theory, that's very much like what uh, Hardy Gross uh, did on the Green's function. This is now a propagator. It's a two-particle Green function rather than one-particle Green function. And if you do the exercise that uh, uh, how do you recommend you to do, or at least one time, once in lifetime, you should do this once in lifetime as well. It's a two-particle operator, uh, two-particle green function. And then if you do this, you will find out that the, the denominator here is the excitation energy, the neutral excitation energy, and then uh, the, uh, the numerator is the uh, amplitude, transition amplitude from, from uh, ground state to excited states. So this contains the excited state information for the neutral systems. And uh, furthermore, really important for the DRT is this exact expression from uh, language and Purdue in 75, the uh, adiabatic connection fluctuation dissipation theory that calculated exactly the electron correlation energy. So the electron correlation energy can be expressed in terms of this pi at different lambda. So this is like a uh, change from the, uh, this 
expression really is one step beyond the adiabatic connection. It make it more concrete. Instead of having a wave function, now you can look at a linear response, a dynamic linear response of the density, and that's contained information. So the that this line that not showing here is that the dynamic linear response of electron density contains two very important information: electron correlation and uh, excitation energy. So, so now the approximation that you, you want to make, of course this is all exact, and uh, you wanted to make approximation to do calculation, and this approximation is the random phase approximation, the simplest one that, uh, that uh, Adrian Dudinsky talked about this, uh, this morning. So it is a geometric series sum of the ring diagram or really uh, geometric sum. And most frequently it's used as direct RPA, there is no exchange because the exchange including exchange cost instability. And that's really very useful. And I focus here called the particle hole RPA because it is a particle hole excitation. So um, the other channel, this particle particle channel, or the instead of density fluctuation, it's a parametric fluctuation. It's what we have explored, and this was done by my, with my former uh, postdoc, having the regular in my former student, Yang Yang. So what we uh, explored was look at how we can calculate the electron correlation from the other channel, the particle particle channel. So this is uh, the, really the analog of the, the um, adiabatic connection dissipation for the charge fluctuation. So the pairing matrix here is the, instead of density matrix, is a pairing matrix. The pairing matrix is two annihilation, or you can look at two creation as well. And this evaluates a ground state. If you have a normal molecule, not in a simple conducting state, this quantity, not conserving particle number, is zero. So you're looking at the quantity zero at all the time. But if you perturb it, with a parent field, create two particles to the 16th, or take two particles away, then you have a parent matrix that is non-zero at subsequent time. So, so the, this, this perturbation is unlike a neutral laser-like perturbation. It is a artificial perturbation for molecule because it is not doable in an experiment. Without, but if you put in a superconductor, you can have that kind of perturbation. So this is a parent fluctuation, and this uh, linear response kernel here, the K linear response function, contain also, I'm going to show you, exact information, electron correlation, as well as excitation information. So that's the formula. If you work out, this will be interesting. This is a two-particle Green's function, and one can work out exactly the same way. Uh, and uh, what you have is a amplitude of creating two particle and taking two uh, taking uh, this is taking two particle away and creating two particle. So it is uh, the excitation energy of going to the excited state of n minus two particle and the excited state of n plus two particles. So this is very similar to the green function that, that Professor Hardy uh, Gross introduced earlier. That was going to n plus 1 and n minus 1. So this is just one more particle, just going to n minus 2 and n plus 2. So because being a two-particle green function, and this is the parent channel. All right. So what the comparison is the following. This is your neutral six teams. The particle hole excitation is generating a hole and creating a particle. Number conserving, so that's excitation that you want to look at normally with a, a, a photon. But the particle-particle uh, channel is adding two particle, and whole-whole channel is taking two particle away. So it's, it is a very different type of excitation, but it is also the, the part of the ground set. It's just how you, depend on how you perturb, you perturb differently, you probe different part of the systems. And the very importantly is that we can exactly derive the correlation energy. So this is exact expression for correlation energy in terms of the pairing fluctuation. So, so compared with the, the earlier work of uh, 
language in Purdue, this density matrix fluctuation or density fluctuation. This is exact expression, so it's this completely parallel. And uh, they are exact, of course, if you have the exact linear response, and when you make approximation, they will give different behavior. So we can look at the approximation. The approximation is, the simple approximation is also a random phase approximation, but this time is now, it's called PPRP, particle particle random phase approximation. And uh, it's the same mathematics, exactly, really, it doesn't matter, mathematics just can almost copy down from one to the other. And I wanted to uh, point out that the PPRPA actually is not our invention. The connection of pairing metrics to electron density, the, uh, to electron correlation energy, was what we de derived. Um, that's new from our work. But PPRPA as approximation already exists in the literature, and it has been used for two things. One has been used to calculate double analyzing energy for molecules using Hartree Fock and use this procedure to calculate double analyzing energy for molecules. Second one, second is that it has been used for calculating correlation energy in nuclear matter, but it's never used for electronic structures. So we look at it, and then uh, I'm skipping the details. So you can generate the correlation energy expression very much like the, the particle hole RPA. And then the equation to solve for excitation energy is a slight modification from the other RPA is that now you have two, I have three metrics. In the normal R, pH RPA, you have two. Now you have three, A and B and C. And uh, the A is all the unoccupied block, A, B, C, D, R, for all the virtual orbitals. And C here is the I, J, K, L, or the occupied. So it's the particle, particle, and that's whole whole channels. And um, the excitation energy is the solution to these uh, equations. So um, the uh, one I wanted to make the okay, so Now we have a correlation energy, and then I certainly want to look at how this perform for the linear condition, the linearity and the flat plane condition. Okay, so so this is how we we perform the uh, the fractional calculation for a occupy orbital function norms, and that's you 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 use uh, fractional occupation. But for a Green's function. For many body theory, uh, how do you do the uh, fractional calculations? And this is a, uh, so we, I'm um, skipping the details. There's this paper in TCCT, uh, um, deriving the calculation for NP2, and uh, I'm skipping the details. Actually, it is all can be expressed in terms of the non interacting Green's function. So the, the RPA or MP2, uh, many body perturbation theory, is a function norm of non interacting Green's function, the constant Green's function, not the true many body uh, Green's function, but it's the uh, one particle green function. And, and the discuss the, the fractional calculation is based on this idea that you can make you can take ensemble sum of the n and n plus one and take a linear linear ensemble sum of these two Green's function, and that leads to the Green function for fractional number of electrons, and you can use this Green function to put into the RPA or to put into uh, PPRPA or perturbation theory to calculate any uh, fractional system. And actually, it's even simpler. With, uh, this formula here, Translate into okay. You just need to scale your orbital by the occupation number. So this is scale orbital. So if it is a occupied orbital, then you scale the occupation number by the square root of its occupation number. If that's your new orbital, and you just do a normal calculation. If it is a unoccupied orbital, you you scale your orbital by one minus occupation number and take square root. And this uh, procedure. Is exactly encoding in this ensemble sum, and you just use the same expression to calculate our uh, correlation energy, and that's what we did. Okay, I'll skip the details. So, the P, uh, look at the fractional behavior of this PPRPA. Uh, PH RPA is in black, and this is a 17 atom 
17 lux on atom, I think it's uh, carbon. Uh, uh, so you can see uh, uh, we can also do this same procedure for CCSD. So you can do the couple clusters theory too. Uh, it's, it's very straight. Uh, with the normal pH RPA, actually you can see it's very convex. So the total energy from the normal pH RPA has huge delocalization error, and it's actually this delocalization error is worse than LDA. And the pH uh, the PPRPA is a red line, beautiful. This come up really nicely. Uh, okay. And of course, that reflects in the chemical potential. If you take the derivative or the take the derivative of energy with respect to the frictional number, then you calculate get ionization energy compared to experiment. Very very good approximation. Okay. Uh, if you do the same thing for pH RPA really bad. The same attitude, even worse than LDA. The, the, of course, if this survives the linear condition, then it should dissociate H2 plus very nicely. So H2 plus uh, is doing uh, very well for PP, PPRPA, and it's really bad for PHRPA. Helium 2 plus, even worse. So this is an even harder example. Uh, the uh, pH RPA is unbound. LDA is also unbound. So the flat plane conditions. So uh, this is the normal pH RPA, and you don't see a flat plane. It's, you see a continuous curve. This is PPRPA. It's really beautiful. This is the first case that we have a functional that really agree with well, the exact condition that we have derived. And that's the exact condition that we derived. And when we derived it, we didn't know there was any function known, and PPRPA is the first one that satisfied this condition. What different atoms? All right, so van der Waals. So it's not this, so van der Waal is also described very well by, uh, by the RPA, the PPRPA correlation, and it's described well by pH RPA, so you can look at the argon dimer with pH RPA and PPRPA and the accurate number. So PPRPA is doing better than the pH RPA. Uh, one reason is that if you look at the second order perturbation limit, you, this is a partial summation to many order, to infinity order. The first, the second order is described exactly by P, uh, PPRPA and only partially correct by PHRPA, and that's maybe the reason. For mixed dimer, same conclusion. If you look at the uh, thermal chemistry, the, uh, the heat of formation, at uh, error of heat formation at a number of atoms, the PHRPA has a larger error and also has a tendency to, include, to increase with 16 sites number of atoms increase. And PPRPA has less error and has relatively stable in terms of not increasing with atom number of atoms. I skip the details. So now I'm going to turn to attention to the next aspect of linear response theory. We can describe excitation energy too, right? So so this is the uh, paper that described. So uh, I, I'm skipping the detail about the challenge in TTDFT. Professor uh, Konik already talked a lot about uh, the, the challenge in TTDFT. Uh, so this is the excitation picture. It's, we excite the particle at the, the 16 from n to n minus 2 and n plus 2. So we add two electrons, we take two electrons away. And that's no, normally not too interesting, right? We're not, we're not doing that kind of experiment. But I can shift my reference. I do my calculation at n minus 2. Then, look at it. My n electron ground state and this are all described as the excitation of this n minus 2. I have even a more interesting picture of this. It's, this is like an embedding theory. Is that, well, my state of n electron described by n minus 2, which is described by a DFT. And then 
plus two electron described derived from linear response theory. Yes? Um, this would be a good idea. Um, in this slide, when you're explaining the changing the reference in the state for setting, I have seen you work for the right picture. Yes. Can you explain it once again? Oh, so I want to, normally you want to calculate the excited states, excitation of the N electron. And, uh, but if I do a PPRP calculation, at least I only get this case of n minus 2 and n plus 2. That's not interesting. But I um, can shift my reference and I do my calculation at n minus 2. Then these two additional electron excitation will be the, the state for the n. Right? So it's just a matter of shifting the reference. And then the, the excitation will be the difference between the ground and excited states. So and my ground state and excited state are calculated in the, exactly the same fashion. Unlike TDDRT. TDRT ground state and excited are very different picture. Right. So this, this is an embedding picture, is that the A minus 2 is described by DRT, and the last two electrons is described by many body theory. So this theory is exact if you have only two electrons. In your system, it's exactly without. So, so one electron, two electron system is well described, and then the n minus two is described by DFT. So I, I call this the Fox space invariant. <coughs> one really uh, big challenge for TDDFT is double excitation. When one excited space involved is two, um, two occupied orbital move to two unoccupied orbitals. Those are double excitation. And the double excitation is completely uh, missing in TDDFT calculation, in normal TDDFT calculation. But uh, in the uh, PPRPA calculation, this is different PPRPA using Hartree fork of P3 lib as the description for the N minus 2. We, we capture all the uh, double excitation very well, and this is the reference experimental number, double citation, and these are the calculations for PPRPA. And it, when you have time? Okay. okay. Uh, so we, we um, capture the double citation, and triple citation also described very well as well. The, uh, and when, so Kiron challenged our, our PPRPA that you have to pass this um, quantum defects and so we work uh, with Kiron and test out and the conclusion that it's actually really good quantum defect. Touch change for excitation. We also have the uh, correct one over R dependence for touch change for excited states. Good single excitation. So if, if uh, it's a single excitation, we, we do not capture all the single excitation, like the, the TDDFT. We capture excitation dominated by homo excitation. But uh, if it is homo dominated and has even substantial contribution from other state, that can also be described. So we move up to 50%. But if it is completely dominated by a lower state, we could do a different PPRPA calculation to capture it. I'm skipping the details, so we, we made it much really faster. And uh, this is a benchmark that we test for the, all the good single excitation. And this is a, a case where TDDFT is doing quite well. And then best TDDFT in this table is the uh, TDB3 lib. Oh, yeah, that's the, the number. So it's a 0 .0, 0 0.38 EV deviation from the experiment. Uh, no, it is slightly lower, the mean sign error is slightly lower. So it's systematic error lower by 0.3 EV. If we do the PPRPA, here is the PPRPA, this is the TDA, which means that we only we ignore the B, the B matrix go to zero, so simply by the calculation. So the PPRPA excitation energy with different reference seem to keep very good uh, the sitting in the experimental value. So the mean sign error is nearly zero. So there's no, system, no systematic bias compared to experiments. 
And also the standard deviation, if you use P3 lip or use PDE, is very similar to TDDRT. So this is the case where TDDRT works well and the, the, the TD uh, PPRPA works as well. But also it highlighted that we should not use how to fork how to fork and reference, how to fork to describe the A minus two because these are much larger system. For small system, that doesn't really matter. For larger system, GFT description is much better. Okay. So we also have developed the gradient. We can calculate we can calculate the gradient and a really interesting development is report in this paper by truncation in the active space. You do not need to, there's a double summation to all the virtual orbitals and we only need to have one index to sum over all the virtual orbitals. The second index just some finite number, then the result converts very quickly. You can see that the number of active occupied orbitals, the number of active uh, virtual orbitals. Very small number, it converts, which means the, the matrix is only, instead of two index, it's effectively one index. So the calculation for the excitation energy is really inexpensive. It's just like a DRT calculation. So that now the calculation for any system is that if once you can convert the TD, uh, convert the ground state N minus 2 calculation to, to calculate excited states, is really very quick, faster than the ground state calculation. So theoretical is a case that um, really uh, described very well by, TDD, uh, by PPRPA and it has great challenge for TDDRT. So this is a set of theoretical from uh, single lip and well, I need to show you what is theoretical. It's going too fast. So theoretical is one ampere electrons. Theoretical is two ampere electrons and they can form a triplet state or they can form a singlet state. And the difference in energy between the triplet and singlet is really a very interesting uh, chemical property or physical property and then has many applications in terms of this triplet singlet energy. And uh, the, we look at the PPRPA performance for all the uh, really very large set of theoretical and perform really beautifully. Hachifork is the red reference. So Hachifork is in the high school that's, that's the uh, hybrid or PPE. I'm just giving the details. Now we apply this to uh, ASIN. Uh, this is a very challenging molecule and has many interesting technological applications. So ASIN um, has theoretical characters. <laughs> <laughs> Skipping the details. So, so it's um, where is the theoretical? I want to show you what what is the theoretical feature. Is that uh, these are the two uh, orbitals. In the theoretical, if you localize the orbital, the theoretical develop in the edge. So, theoretical is you think about the simple example is hydrogen molecule dissociation. It's a theoretical. It's one one unpaired electron, another unpaired electron. That's a theoretical. So and this, you can have singlet or you can have triplet. And this, this acing, as you make it longer, the theoretical character occur at the edge of the molecule. So we have kind of like two theoretical, two uh, a pair of theoretical. And so the singlet and triplet get energy. We, uh, what we conclude is that the triplet is always higher than the singlet, and that's energy, uh, depending on what geometry you use. And we have really good uh, comparison of the single and triplet gap. Uh, so this is the number of acing in the number of bending in the acing, and compared to experiment, experiment was available only for up to five. You need five, and uh, the, this is the calculation from PPRPA using B three lib as reference. Also, there's a very interesting conclusion from our calculation is that the how much is the theoretical character 
developed as the length as function of the length. So if you look at, so this is the weight from the homo-homo uh, and normal-lumo contribution, which means that this, this contribution, if it is one, then it's, you only have single reference. And if it is uh, less than one, you have some other reference contribution. So up to our conclusion is until unit 10, up to here, uh, up to here, 90% is still single character, single, uh, not a single, it's not a direct one, it's a, a closed cell singlet. So not up, to, up to 10 is a single reference closed cell systems. So this conclusion is quite different from other calculation using Cauchy for edge reference. The DMRC calculation, the multi-reference calculation using Cauchy for edge reference. And there is this curve go up much, much quicker. And even at two, already it's not good enough. So it, you, the theoretical or the multi-reference character increase dramatically uh, compared to, to the DFT reference. And actually, we, I just got uh, some uh, information that experimentally it can probe how much the contribution from, from uh, different states. So this may be a very interesting Probably for, for experimental uh, confirmation. The, uh, so what we have done is study four states of the polyacins and the double excited states. I did not have time to explain, but uh, we also captured the double excitation very well. Conical intersection is my last topic. So conical intersection is very, very important for uh, non-adiabatic dynamics. It's the, the transition state between the ground state and excited states. And um, that's how it looked like in a very simple molecule with three hydrogen atoms. And that's geometry change and that's this one single point conical intersection. So TDDIP, because the, the treatment for the ground state and excited state are different. One state is described by DFT, one state DFT, and excited state by the linear response. So there's no parallel description, not compatible description of ground and excited state. This means that this is uh, direct, uh, this conical intersection is not well described. And that's the picture of TD DFT with B So It's very, very rough. And if we do PPRPA with B lip, because the ground state and excited states are described by the same mathematics, same structure. So it describes the direct, uh, the conical intersection very well, and other 16 as well. So we have look at, uh, I don't have the detail, but last slide is that uh, we have uh, collaborated with uh, Thomas Trondheim and his student, Adriel, and implement PPRPA on uh, SCC DFTB. So this is a tight bonding approach and it amazingly it, it captures essentially all the same number as the uh, first principle calculation. So it's even faster now. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you. Great. Are there questions? Yes, Adam? For your two uh, electron embedding? Yeah. So those two outer electrons? Yes, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Yeah. So the so the two outer electron use the orbital of the n minus two, but it's not using just two orbitals. It use all the possible linear combination of those orbitals. So it has enough flexibility because it's it's not just taking the two orbital take two orbital from the n minus two. It take in the RPA, PPRPA, is a linear combination of all the possible unoccupied states. So it should have enough flexibility to capture. Yes. Can you get oscillator strengths? Oh yeah, I, I did not show it. Uh, we, 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 yeah, we can get oscillator strengths, and uh, it, it's very, very good. 
Yeah. Okay. Is, uh, in particular, can you get non between two excited states? <laughs> two excited, I do yes. not know. Two, because because between the Guang and excited state, yes. Yeah, okay. But, but then, then, then I will not, I will not assume that what any difficulty between two excited states. Yeah, because in, in TDDFT, this is a big problem. Yeah. yeah. So, so the the, the coupling, the non event coupling, has been derived um, for PPRBA by Wen Jiang Liu from Peking University. Ah. So he derived it, and and actually and it has been used as, along with PPRBA to calculate non event dynamics by So Song Li. Uh, in one of the graphs, you show that for uh, PRPA and PHRPA, mm -hmm. uh, the pieces within the world are the same as PHRPA. Yeah. Is it because of the different scaling of these two methods? Scaling. The, 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 the formal scaling, computational scaling, you mean? Yes. No, 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 that shouldn't be the reason. Formal computational scaling is similar, but in practice, uh, PPRPA, so far, is for calculating correlation energy is more expensive. Uh, but the, the reason for the, the reason for the, the increase with with number of electrons may be related to the um, PPRPA has a describing electron pair well. So actually, it's one pair at a time. So it describes electron pair well, and that may be the reason. I do not have better mathematics in terms of explaining that figure. But that's the observation. Thank you. Uh, on, on this question about getting the coupling between two excited states, yeah. if you think about what happens in, in very strong fields, mm -hmm. if you always in the dipole approximation, you always have the same electric field. Mm -hmm. So in principle, if you have a way of from linear response, getting all the transition dipoles between states, you have enough information to sort of do the response to the entire electric field, even if it's very strong. So you get sort of all the companies. Oh. And then you can run a, a sort of, let's say, the basis state of the, the level. Ah, so you go, go beyond linear response. Absolutely. I see, I see. You can do, right, I mean, oh, that's you just do linear response to see how to do it, and then figure out a, mm -hmm. a, a more efficient way of getting a whole bunch of yeah, no, I think get get anything you need for oh, that's any response to any Interesting. So it's so it's like you you run the run the time dependent calculation, yeah, no idea back time dependent calculation for, for all the possible. So so far it's been used only for two states, the ground state and four six states. Yeah. So it's a lot of value. Yeah, well and and, and even the response even when you don't have a strong field and TDDFT when you're use quadratic response to get the, the couplings between two excited states mm -hmm. the push that numbers have shown that you get these divergences uh, because of the lack of the frequency can essentially be tracked down to all the time against the path. But I guess I guess you don't, maybe don't have this problem. Between two excited states? Yes, well, two excited I do not know because that has not been done. But I, I think it will be very similar, the formula wise, right. it will be very similar between the ground and the excited because there's nothing unique about the ground state yes. that we have. You have an intuition why this plane condition comes out so well. It's amazing. It, it is. It is. It, it, I, I was amazed too. Now, uh, I think well, compared, to, I can make comparison. I cannot say in, in vacuum, but in comparison with PHRPA, I know why it failed for PHRPA because there's no exchange. For it's, it's a consequence of the direct RPA. So it it make no exchange in the kernel, and that's the, the reason. But for PPRPN, we have 100% exchange in there, and that, and there's no uh, instability problem because this is much more stable. You're taking two left away, adding two left. So there was never any instability when we include the full exchange. And, and you have to include full exchange because you're talking about two-particle interaction, and this two-particle has anti-symmetry 
behind it. So you cannot just take the direct term. There's no make that doesn't make any sense to make a direct PDRPA. You have to include exchange. And you and, and I will assume that at some point maybe the higher order need to be included. But so far we have not we don't have any information on how to do the next order. I find it a bit counterintuitive mm -hmm. that one can actually formulate the coupling constant formula in terms of the pairing, the pairing response as well. Uh, Why counterintuitive? Well, it's. Well, I, I have too much probably the superconducting picture in mind. So it's really a different response function. It is, absolutely. Still, you get the complete exchange correlation energy. Yeah, we claim that the exact formula. I believe you, it's not that. I find it. Oh, you may ask me that, well, well where's the, um, the, the instantaneous type of picture, right? Yes, yeah, for example, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so, 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 Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt, um, Normally, we think of the wall is instantaneous type. Mm -hmm. So, density fluctuation, density fluctuation. There's a there's a dipole and dipole instantaneously, and that's what the Vendor walls. So, so, but the interesting thing is that well, I don't have instantaneous dipole in, in this. This is pairing. So, it's a pairing fluctuation that that. That describe it. So it's instantaneous pairing fluctuation that describe the the Vanderbilt interaction. We're writing up a paper, uh, and and actually, if you compare these two formula at the, using the PP uh, RPA approximation, um, this this the PP RPA is exact for second order, second order MP2. So we have the exact second order. It's just a matter of interpretation, but you can see the, the, the mathematical consequences of that all is identical. Okay, then thank you again.